no idea of the location. So Dillinger can pull the ATM settings from the device, which includes all the master passwords, but it also includes receipt data. And you know when you use an ATM at the bottom of the receipt, always has the location or the name of the business. Um, so even if it doesn't have the exact, yeah, if it doesn't have the exact location, it'll have the name of the business. And of course, the best feature is to upload my rootkit. Again, bypasses all authentication, initializes the software, uploads um, the rootkit, and then basically lets me uh, overwrite the entire firmware of the device. So in general, someone is going to need to be at the ATM if you want to get any sort of payout. So again, I uh, added a feature so it would be possible to carry out an attack without ever visiting the ATM at all. So when someone inserts a card, the track data is captured and saved, and I can then retrieve that track data remotely. And finally, the remote jackpot, which kind of speaks for itself. So Scrooge is the ATM rootkit. Um, developed specifically for ATMs running on Windows CE. Scrooge implements the typical root rootkit technology you'd expect, hides itself and its friends by various CE system hooks, uh, hides itself from the process list, hides itself from the file system by hooking syscalls and filtering the results. And there's a hidden pop-up menu which can be activated by both a special key sequence on the ATM or by inserting a card with custom track data. Now, it'll run on any ARM or Xscale-based ATM, Intel with a few tweaks. Originally, I was designing it for both Intel and ARM, but it turns out that CE on x86 is actually pretty rare and basically non-existent in the ATM world. So the code for interfacing with the ATMs has to be customized for the different ATMs, as they all use different peripherals and kind of non-standard ways of communicating. So Scrooge's hidden menu. Uh, I just use a standard set windows hook filter to capture the side buttons on the ATM. Um, although set windows hook is actually undocumented in CE, it still exists and it works as expected. So a combination of keys will trigger the hidden menu and it's varied enough not to be launched by accident, but maybe if there's a kid playing around with the ATM, he may end up scoring big, who knows. Um, and the card reader is hooked by an inline detour style patch. So this is where you essentially patch a branch instruction into a piece of code you'd like to intercept. The branch jumps to your code, your code executes, then returns the original function. Now with the hook in place, there's a check on the read buffer for track data that matches gimme the loop. And if it matches, the menu is brought up in that way as well. So the menu functions are fairly standard for what you'd expect. You can dispense from each cassette, print out stats, which include the remaining bill count, and you can exit. Um, so yeah, to add my own functionality, I've added a few inline patches. Uh, essentially, you can patch a small assembler stub into the functions you want to hook. The stub then calls a function in external DLL overwrites any overwritten instructions, and then continues as normal. Now, this could be done by dynamically, but the fact that the ATM vulnerabilities allow me to replace the executables entirely, we can make these patches permanent, which is actually far more reliable. And it's also a lot easier on ARM as every instruction is there because it's final as well. So I place hooks at the card reader, the pin pad, and the parser that ho um, handles remote configuration commands. So with those hooks, I can now add my own handy features, so I can save the track data, capture the pin pad, have a few custom remote commands. So pull the track data, sure. Remote jackpot, might as well. All right, so there's gonna be quite a lot of demos. So I, I went through that a bit quick because uh, I think there's probably a good 25 or so minutes of demos. So I may as well put my money where my mouth is or the ATM's money where its mouth is, I guess. Okay, so this is uh, Dillinger's interface. We can add a group, so we'll say Black Hat. Add an ATM, Barnaby's ATM. Location uh, on stage at Black Hat. <laughs> And Dillinger supports uh, both dial-up and TCP IP. So uh, in this case, I'm using TCP IP, of course. By the way, um, just to re reiterate, this is by default. Um, remote functionality is enabled on all of these ATMs as they ship out. This one here, at least, not the other one. Uh, 
Okay. So now I can right click on my ATM. I can then test the bypass, upload the rootkit, uh, reset to default, get the track settings, get ATM settings, etc. So uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if we should switch to the ATM. You know, not, not just yet. Okay. So I can test the bypass, connects to the ATM, testing ATM authentication bypass success, and it disconnects. Now we'll, we'll actually blow up the ATMs in a sec, but all that shows on the uh, ATMs is just RMS process. I have to wait till that goes away. So it's nothing too noticeable, you know, if you're a, if you see this ATM. Actually, if someone close to the thing could let me know when it's uh, it's gone. Okay. So now, um, most important feature, of course, is to upload the rootkit. So we'll upload Scrooge, the final version. Connects, sends a bypass successful, initiates upload, and it's uploading it to the ATM now. This is bypassing all authentication in the ATM and by default. Now, even though it's over the network, it takes a little while because they have their own proprietary protocol uh, which acknowledges each packet and then has a small delay and so on. Um, proprietary protocol, of course, has its own proprietary encryption and you all know what happens when people implement proprietary encryption. It's, fa <laughs> it's fairly easy to make your own. Okay, so when it finishes uploading, the ATM should reboot. And if we could uh, flick to the ATM now on the screen. Takes a little while, Windows CE, you know, it's not the, not the fastest beast out there. Yeah, if we could just pan out just a bit too. If we could get the screen and the dispenser. Yeah, that's cool. What's that? Oh, they'll be spitting money, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Okay, let me make sure I have my little card here. So as I said, there's two ways um, to input, to get the remote menu to, or the hidden menu to pop up. One is with a special card with the track data. So if we insert. Okay. I always say it's 100% reliable and why doesn't it work? There we go. Okay, so that card now has popped up my hidden menu. Um, you can dispense 50 bills from A, B, C, or D, which are the four cassettes in the dispenser. You can print statistics, which give you the master passwords and so on, or you can exit. So I'll just uh, dispense 50 from the first cassette. So these, um, these are million dollar bills, but it will <laughs> probably not much use at the craps table. The other, the other one will spit out a bit better currency. Okay, so now we can exit, and I said there was a, a key sequence which you could also enter to pop up that menu. <laughs> these buttons are a bit buggered. 